Yes, yes. Today we're going to talk about Adam and Eve and really how the Lord presented them together. So as we begin our series, we're going to talk about the very first question that I think most couples need to ask if they're going to talk about the purpose of a marriage. And that question is, why did God create marriage? It's just a very, very profound question. And I'm sure that Many people have different answers to this question, but we like to always go back to what the Bible says. Go back to really what God says about marriage and really how he planned marriage out and really what his reasons were for creating marriage. Absolutely. I could not agree more. And in fact, those words are very, very important words. In the King James, James Version, it mentions that God will create a help meet for Adam. And that is so significant because what is that is really saying is, is that God is creating someone that is just right for Adam. Someone that is appropriate for Adam. Someone is who is that perfect? closer as we include the Lord in our marriage. And that also means in our prayer life. So the more we pray together yes. in the Lord's presence, we become very closer. And he, he works within our hearts to bind us together. Yes, to becoming one flesh, right? Yes. <laughs> and we also talk, want to talk about a lifelong companion. And that's what we are to one another. And we're supposed to be together until the end of time. And that's why we titled the series Endless Love because your love is supposed to last forever, right? It's not supposed to be where you're going to have 50 wives as in the Old Testament. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. You're supposed to have one wife with one husband together forever. Right? Absolutely, There's absolutely. There's so many songs written about love. Love is a great power, right? We feel love, I mean, from an infant, from the touch of our mom, right? Yes. From the touch of our dad when they're nurturing us. 
And you long for that as a single person. You long for another person to make you feel nurtured and loved and accepted. There's Absolutely. There's so many songs that are written about endless love. Absolutely. Love forever, always and forever. <laughs> and for you, yes. you are my lady, yes. all these songs. <laughs> and yes. by the way, our next lesson mm -hmm. next week on Wednesday, we'll be talking about the passion of love. And we'll be talking about some of these song songs and how they relate to the passion. And we might even dance for you. Oh, uh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> so the one thing I want to say uh, to you, Alicia, is guess what? what? When I found you, I found forever. How about that? <laughs> so look, um, so life, being married, is a lifelong endeavor. God intended it, it for it to be blessed. He intended it for, it for it to be holy, and he intended it for it to be fun and exciting. And, and that's really uh, the purpose of, um, of um, this lesson. Yes, I want to read Genesis 2, 23 through 24 in the King James Version. It says, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. So here at Crossroads Marriage Ministry, we have a motto. Yes, and that motto is three, three strands, strands, one, one flesh. flesh. Yes. Absolutely, that is the motto of our <laughs> marriage ministry. That, that is where it comes from, the Bible. Absolutely <laughs> right. And you know, um, speaking of one flesh, you know, this is a journey. Um, and you know, we have two people that come into a marriage that are totally, totally different people. And we have different backgrounds, and we have different ideas and different thoughts, different desires. And the one thing that is a mystery that the Bible speaks of is the way of a man with a woman. And that mystery has to be kind of unraveled throughout the marriage. And I think as a couple grows together, as a couple seeks the Lord and invites the Holy Spirit into their marriage, God is fusing those two people together to become one flesh. So we, you experience that one flesh instantly on the wedding day, but then you have to journey throughout the marriage that God is working on both partners to kind of grow to become one as well. So there's two ways that we become one flesh. Yes, and as I think back, I remember coming from a single parent household and my husband, he came from a um, two parent household and I always thought, I want my marriage to succeed. So from the beginning, even before we had children, we sought ways to enhance our marriage. So we were always looking for marriage ministries and conferences and yes. I think we signed up for the first one within three months of our marriage and people were like you guys are newlyweds why are you here <laughs> you know but we were always seeking ways that we could love each other better i mean i didn't know if i was doing it right but i was trying so yes it's, it, you know, when it's the first time it, it it definitely helps to have uh, assistance from people who love the lord and also who can kind of direct and guide us in the right way and so seeking those courses like like uh, family life and others will be very, very helpful uh, in terms of um, bringing the couple together and they can learn and grow together in the Lord. Absolutely, but the Bible is our ultimate source, right? Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yes. So on the next slide, we're talking about what is God's plan for marriage? We wanna emulate how Christ loves the church, right? Love is yes. an action word. So how does Christ love the church? What did he do? Yes, this is so, so very important to a marriage, especially to a couple who have their heart stayed on the Lord and really want to please him, have a desire to kind of be one, have a desire to want to stay together. You know, marriage is a microcosm of really what God is trying to show the entire world, and that is he loves us so much. Yes, he does. You know, he loves us so much that he sent his only begotten son to die for us. Yes. And there are a lot of love songs that are out there, yes. as Felicia said. And love can sometimes be just about the words that are spoken. Mm -hmm. But in truth, true love is really action. It is. And oftentimes, true love is commingled with sacrifice. Absolutely. And so when you consider the fact that you have a holy God who loves us so much, who 
has allowed his son to die in place of us, that is really true love in action. Yes, I had four sons and I cannot imagine sacrificing any of them for any of, I would rather be sacrificed than any of my sons. So I cannot imagine mm. giving up one of them for the church. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just so hard. And in fact, uh, you see the scripture, it says John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. But I gotta tell you, there's another scripture in the Bible that actually takes it a bit further than that. And that scripture comes from Romans 5 and 8. And it says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So what that says to me is, boy, while we weren't even thinking about God, while we were just doing our own thing, while we didn't even care about God, while we were his friends, while we were probably more friends with the enemy than we were God, <laughs> while we were doing all those things, guess what? He died for us. Yes, so that is such a great love, and it's the same love that God expects for us to show inside and outside of our marriage. Yes. That is the point uh, about answering this question. What is God's plan for marriage? Is that we show God's love inside and outside of that marriage. Yes, and I'm thinking of Romans 12, 10. It says in the NIV version, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves. So sometimes we're so self-centered. We're not thinking about our spouse. We're not thinking about someone else, but we're supposed to honor our spouse above our own selves. Absolutely. And, you know, I think everyone knows uh, the love chapter within scriptures. It's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I encourage, we encourage you, you all to read that chapter, single or married, any Christian, any person. It's a great chapter because what it really says is, is love overcomes. Love is powerful. Love covers. And, you know, I think it's just so important when we take that and apply it within marriage. The other thing also that I think is just so great, Psalms 85:10, it says, mercy and truth are met together. And then it says, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Boy, you know, these are people, these are values, these are habits that we want to include in our marriage because they're lovers, and it's just so great. And I think um, to the, the degree that we can show these things, righteousness and peace and mercy and truth, let's invite these lovers into our marriage as we love each other. Yes. Absolutely. So the part three on the next slide says, how can God use our marriage, right? You can be used by God for a purpose, right? You're not just married for each other, right? You can't believe that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And you know, We've, um, we've, uh, the Lord has used us as a couple to, to, to help encourage others. And in fact, I think we have one story which I'll allow Renisha to share. Yes, I remember a time when we had a friend who shared with us at dinner that she had gone to the doctor and her baby had, her unborn baby had a spot on the liver. And she asked us for prayer. And we said, sure, we'll pray. So I laid my hand on her belly and Teddy laid his hand on top of mine and then we pray we believe God for a miracle and the very next doctor's visit she said there's no there's no spot whatever he saw before he compared the images and there's no spot and I said it was just faith we had faith right all we need to have is faith the size of a yes. mustard seed and we've seen God do countless miracles yes. so your marriage is not just for you it's for other people who yes. may not be, who may not have the same faith as you, who may not be. In fact, I believe she may have been, the, the couple may have been Catholic, and we were not Catholic, but we, I mean, we considered them Christian. It, we still were friends, and we still talked about the Lord, <laughs> and, yeah. and we were just praising God for the victory. Yes. So God can have victory. He can use you to draw others closer to, to him. Yes. He can use you to share your testimony and what he's done in your lives and, and in your marriage, how he's brought you from place to place, because we've not just lived in New Jersey, but 
He's brought us from Texas to Missouri to Illinois to Pennsylvania to New Jersey. And that was only God. We're here, and wherever we go, we want to be used by God in whatever capacity that he wants to do so. Absolutely. You know, um, there is power mm -hmm. in marriages. Um, those marriages that are, are in the will of the Lord and that seek the Lord, God will show you the step every step of the way in this power um, and all we have to do is just draw on that power that God that God uh, you know provides so that's just simply fantastic one more verse first Thessalonians 5 11 boy therefore encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing so one of the things um, that I love uh, being married is that when I'm down my wife is here to lift me up and encourage me. I mean, sometimes I have a bad day at work or sometimes when I need a break from the kids, you know, she'll, she'll say, move aside, I got this. It's so great to have a partner who can come alongside to kind of help gird me up while I'm trying to, you know, take care of it, you know, so much. And that is, that is the beauty of having um, a helper. A helper, <laughs> absolutely. Yes, we're supposed to be that to each other. And part four, it says, what is God's desire for marriage and raising families? I know not everyone has children, right? But sometimes you might want to step in and be a babysitter. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. And you, may, you may have seen the picture, it's in the slide deck of, of our big family. We have six children. Yes. Uh, the oldest is 24, the youngest is five. Yes, we did it to ourselves. However, however, <laughs> the Bible does say, be fruitful and multiply and boy did we did that you know what children are a blessing but one thing that we need to remember as parents is is god has a wonderful plan for each of our children yes, he does. what he wants us to do and what he wants us as parents to be responsible for is to put within them the law of the Lord in their hearts. Yes. And how we do that, we train them into the word. We, 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 we teach them about the Bible, stories about Gideon and Samson, mm -hmm. about Adam and Eve, about Abraham Joshua. and Sarah, Joshua. <laughs> so there are so many people, prophets in the Bible, yes. that stood on faith mm -hmm. in the Lord. Yes. And that's what they need to survive. Boy, what about today's life, today's world? Yes. That's what they need to survive in Absolutely. today's world. We have so much going on. And, you know, who can make it? Who can, who can stand alone without God's love? In fact, Absolutely. all of us are lost without his love. Absolutely. We all need Proverbs him. Proverbs 22, 6 in the King James Version says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We have God's promise that if we train up our children from when they're in the, the womb. I mean, we talk to our children. I remember, I remember reading Bible stories and singing VBS songs, even when they were in the womb. And you're thinking, boy, but when they start kicking around, they're hearing, right? <laughs> <laughs> and they know that song when they're born and they're yeah. looking for that song again. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's, it's powerful. And, and thankfully our children, you know, they love the Lord and we're so grateful. We had two of them baptized here mm -hmm. at Crossroads. And, what a miracle to want to be baptized when you're a teenager because you could want so many other things but to to say i want to be baptized yeah that is so touching yeah it really <laughs> is and i think the earlier that the lord can can um influence and, and can 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 get inside of a person's heart the better because they'll have a great life yes. with the lord and um you know what's so important for parents is to to protect their home protect their household especially from the environment that we see happening today. It's always been there, but it's so important to have uh, a stance. And the stance that we take is, is found in Proverbs you know, um, 22, 6, where it says, train a child in the way that he should go. The other stance we take is, is, is that when it comes to our household, it says, but as for me and my house, household, we will serve the Lord. Yes, that's in Joshua 24. It's in Joshua 24, 15. And you know what? Sometimes it's important to, to take that stand. And yes. we can't be afraid. We have to stand up uh, when we're threatened and when we, we feel like that, that, that the world is going to take over. Well, God is stronger. God yes, is yes. there. And we need to rely on his strength and rely on, 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 on his yes. source. And when it says, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord, 
that means that you have rules in your household, right? That your children should abide by. And sometimes it's what goes on here is not what goes on there, or I'm not gonna stand for what's going on over there. So, I mean, sometimes you have to take the tough stance. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's not gonna be easy. Nothing is easy that's worth yeah. anything, right? You know, there's a phrase that popped into my mind that says, egos fly along. Yes, <laughs> and so we're raising. They, fly, they soar. Yeah, they soar. <laughs> and so we're raising egos yes, we in our nest at home. Yes. And so sometimes that means, you know, uh, you know, we have to, you know, be a leader. And we have to show that by taking a stand yeah. for righteousness, taking a stand for the Lord. And that's just so important mm -hmm. and, so, and so key. And it's also important to have a mission statement for your family, because I remember when we would send our kids off to school, I would tell them, Liddell's are leaders, you know? And, <laughs> and they would repeat after me, Liddell's are leaders. Do you know what that means, you know? <laughs> and, they, and they would say, oh, mom, you know, we have to say this, but I would go through what Liddell's are, who yeah. Liddell's are, so they would know this is who you are, yeah. right? <laughs> well, it's actually true for us because, um, as I said, we, uh, we both were in the military, but early on when we were dating, God uh, revealed to us, and, and we kind of talked, and we, and we, we, we uh, shared this. When my wife was in high school, she was involved in her junior ROTC program, and she was so involved that she was actually the commander of the program. Well, guess what? In my high school, I was involved in my JROTC program, and I was also the commander of my program. So. God put together leaders, and we didn't even know it, <laughs> but, but God is so good, and uh, we're just so excited. Moving on to the next slide, part five. What mission has God given our marriage, right? You are on a mission field, and it's unique. It's for your marriage only. Uh, someone else can't wear your shoes, right? Someone else can't do what you're supposed to do what you're equipped to do they haven't done they haven't been where you've been they're not going where you're going mm -hmm. right yes mm -hmm. the lord has blessed two very very unique people to come together into one flesh mm -hmm. and these two people Alicia and myself have different skills and different talents and different qualities mm -hmm. And God's aim, his goal, is to use those skills for his kingdom. Yes, That's his, his goal. Glory, yes. That's what he wants to do. And so I believe, we believe, that every single married couple has a unique mission only from the Lord. And the trick is that we've got to seek the Lord to find out what that is. Absolutely. So what that means is a lot of time on our knees in prayer, Absolutely. you know, apart and also together on our knees asking God, what does he want us to do next? And that's just so important. Yes, I'm reminded of a couple's, there's a couple's Bible, and it's great because there are things you can do together, and it gives you a devotional, and then it tells you what to do on your date night. And so I love that. You know, We've I, used it a lot. Well, I, I can tell you this, I love date nights. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that, but yes, look. we promote date nights. Yeah, we, we promote days. We go out, uh, I think, uh, at least once a week, we right? Once a week. Yeah, we try yes. once a week. Uh, but Even really, if it's just for a smoothie. Yes, 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 really a wonderful time yeah. uh, to kind of just get away from the, the stresses of the day, stresses of the job. Um, you know, it's just nice to be able to kind of sit together and date each other even after 25 years is so important mm -hmm. so we do encourage we do encourage that yes, children won't be at home forever no they even won't even though it feels like it at our house yes they won't be, right yes so in ephesians ephesians 5 15 through 17 in the niv it says be very careful then how you live not as unwise but as wise making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. That goes back to understanding what God wants you to do in your marriage. Absolutely right. And in Acts 13, 47, you know, for this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. So I think what's so very important is that God's heart is that no one is lost. And he will use whatever he has to use in order to, to, to let people know about his unending love. And I think that's just so key and so important. Um, and he will use couples that are open to his, um, to his instruction, 
that are open uh, to, uh, to, to, to his will. And I think that's just so important. Galatians 6, 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Another version says if we don't faint, right? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. And, you know, um, you know, things can be very hard. Um, I know for the past year, two years, we've dealt with this ugly, ugly scourge called COVID. And I always like to say, you know, nothing is greater than God. And so I won't give any other time doing our series to COVID because God has COVID underneath his feet. Yes, he does. I think that what, what we should do is praise God for his goodness, to celebrate his love for us, because he will never leave us. And that's just so important to know and to hold on, especially as a couple um, that, is, that is trying to do their best in um, serving the Lord, telling others about how great God is, and raising a family. Yes, and then remembering <laughs> how far he's brought us from. Yes, yes, right? absolutely. So, you know, I want to summarize. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say just a couple of things, a couple of takeaways that I think we should have tonight, and then I'm going to... Um, see if Relisha has a couple of things that she wants to share. But I would say two things as I was preparing this lesson for tonight, I would just take away as homework. So one question that I, that I would um, like to kind of present would be whether you're single or married, here's the question. What are we willing to sacrifice to get closer to the Lord? whether you're single or married, what are we willing to sacrifice to get closer to the Lord? If you remember, I mentioned that love, true love, oftentimes is co-mingled with sacrifice. At some point, you're going to sacrifice something. Um, our great motto was Jesus. It's Jesus. You know, he sacrificed um, himself so he can rise and give us salvation. But I think it's important for us to remember that you know, we've got to also have that same attitude. We've got to be willing to sacrifice, to make things better. I think that's so key. My second question is, what are we doing in terms of spending time with the Lord? How much time are we spending with the Lord? I mentioned earlier that one of the big secrets to being married is praying together and praying alone. And that's just so key. That's when God can get us and when I have my prayer time with the Lord, I hear that small, still voice, and I hear the Holy Spirit saying, Ted, you probably shouldn't have said that to Alicia. You probably need to go back and apologize to her. And you know, all the time I go and apologize to her. It may not be immediately, <laughs> but, but all the time I go back and apologize to her. Whatever was broken, I try to fix it. But my point here is, is it's so important to stay open, open your hearts, to the Holy Spirit, and that's so key. In the same way, God speaks to us as a couple in prayer about our vision, about our mission, about the next job to take, about where we want to live. So many questions can be answered just in a long time with the Lord. And I think when we spend all our time, you know, in the past 25 years pursuing each other in a marriage, which is so important and so key, what we don't want to forget is that God, too, would love it if we spend more time with him too yes. as well. That's just so key because ultimately this is really about his kingdom and about us loving him yes. because he, he created loved us, us first. And he gave marriage to us as a gift, but he is the ultimate gift, yes. right? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to turn over to Alicia to see if she has maybe a couple of comments that she wants to uh, conclude. I think that um, the point, the part that you talked about, the the apologizing, I love that. That, that is so true. And, and it's something that I admire so much about him because um, I could be mumbling and saying whatever and grumbling and then, you know, minutes later, he's coming right back. It doesn't give me long to stay angry, right? Yeah. You, are, you are so graceful. Thank you so much for giving me grace. I, I love it, I love it, I love it. Yes, absolutely, so very important. So we wanted to say thank you so much for yes. our time Don't this evening. Send in your questions. Yes, yes. We're going to have some prayer time right now. Um, I'll, I'm going to let Alicia pray, then I will pray as well. But thank you so much. Those at home, please come back for next week. We're going to talk about 
passion, passion of marriage. And there's a surprise because apparently I've got to put on my dancing shoes because my wife wants me to dance in front of you all. Oh, but anyway, it's going to be great. It's going to be fun. All right, let's pray. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness, for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made, the ultimate sacrifice that you made through your son, Jesus. Lord, we can never repay you enough. We can never thank you enough. I thank you, Lord, for creating a spouse for me, just for me. <laughs> you, fit, you fitted me from his rib, and you formed him in your likeness, just, just so that we could become one. And I thank you for all the marriages that you're going to touch and work through. I thank you for the single people, Lord, that they're going to be encouraged to hang on, that their help me is on the way. Lord, I thank you for all your goodness. I thank you for the ways that you have equipped us, that you have brought us from such a long way. It's crossroads. And I ask that you'll continue to use us, continue to work through us, continue to let your Holy Spirit work, do its work, Lord, and comfort us, encourage us, yes, Lord. direct us, order our steps, yes, Lord. Lord. We need you. We cannot do anything without you. Aside from you, we are nothing. Yes, Lord. And we know that. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, we just praise you. We give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, we praise your name for who you are. Lord, you are our endless love. Yes, you are. And God, we love you so much. We thank you for the love that you've given us. You know, all of us would be lost without your love. And God, we just ask that as we've heard your words of encouragement tonight, we ask that from your heart to our hearts, that you speak a word to every single listener underneath the sound of our voices. You speak a word, that you encourage them, that you let them know that you will never leave them, that you let them know that they have a bright future. And that if they submit to you, that you'll find the best choice, yes. the perfect companion for them. We praise you, Lord, for all that you're doing. We look forward to the next three lessons that we'll learn more and more about what your word says. We appreciate you. We love you. Yes, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Honey, yes. guess what? When I found you, I found my everlasting love. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. We'll see, you see you on next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Yes. We're excited. <laughs> Don't forget, I'll have my dancing shoes on. <laughs> you can send in your request for a song, maybe. Well, I don't know about that, but. <laughs>